Hi everyone, before you get started with creating markets in Market Boost, we have some important tips that will help you get the best results and maximize your engagement with leads and clients. If you're not familiar with Market Boost and would like to learn more about it, please visit our website at www.ihomefinder.com slash products slash market boost. In setting up your markets, your goal should be to divide your territory into areas that are meaningful to the people who are looking to live there as well as those who already do. If you choose too large of an area, your subscribers might lose interest in alerts that aren't specific enough to them. If you choose too small of an area, your alerts might not include enough listings and data to be appealing. Some considerations for your markets should include location, property type, quantity of listings, price, and your niche. Let's take a look at each of these. Location is usually the biggest factor in how a home is valued as well as in a home buyer search. When you're setting up markets, you'll likely want to create different markets for distinct geographical segments of the area you serve. Your market should correspond to how home buyers in your area search, so don't be afraid to get specific. It's also possible to create one market for a larger area and then create additional markets to divide that larger area into smaller pieces. For example, a market for all of San Francisco with additional markets covering each neighborhood within the city. Some examples of segments to consider when setting up markets would include town, zip code, school district, neighborhood, subdivision, high rise, or golf course. A little tip, use a basic search to focus on a zip code or city and use an advanced search to create markets based on school districts or neighborhoods when that information is available from your MLS. If your area is best divided using an option that's not available in the MLS data, consider using a polygon to draw custom areas for your markets. Property type is another major factor to consider when setting up markets. Not only are different property types valued differently, but clients are typically focused on a single property type in their search. Different property types to consider include house, townhouse, condo, farm, or lots and land. Another tip. The property types available to you depend on your MLS. Consider creating a market for each property type within a particular area to make your markets more relevant, or focus only on the type that you specialize in. While setting up your markets, you'll get a real-time count of listings available using your current search criteria. This number should guide your market setup. For instance, if the area you specified has no listings for sale, you should consider removing some criteria to make sure your search will provide results. If you have over 300 listings, you might want to consider splitting your market into two or even three separate markets. Additional criteria to help narrow searches include bedrooms, bathrooms, minimum square feet, and minimum lot size. Price can be a good tool to narrow a search but use it carefully when creating markets if you plan to use the market report. If you create too narrow of a price range, the data presented in the market report, such as medium price versus square foot, will become less meaningful. If you're working with a specific focus, make sure your market represents that. If you're an agent specializing in golf course condos, your markets should single out each course in your area. Setting up markets that reflect your business will improve the listings and data that appear in your reports and will leave no doubt to your subscribers and site visitors that you're the local expert. Well, that wraps up our tips for defining markets and market boost. We hope you found this information helpful and we'll see you next time.